Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. See, in this whole story, there will be these poignant moments where, you know, of, of these human stories and is, it is bad. But when you take this wide angle view of the whole thing, the point is, I mean, see, Dhanava also has been saying this, that we must right size. Everybody says right size. Now, how do you right size? We are given the example of the Chinese. I've had this detailed study that done in our track. How did the Chinese downsize? They downsized by simply sidestepping to their police forces. That's it. They didn't downsize. Everybody was not on the road one fine day. They sidestepped. Yeah, I, I would like to come in on this. You know, uh, no, uh, uh, Jan Shukla, you're not going to get away with that that easily. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah, ahead, yeah, General. Okay, sir, so, uh, we cannot compare the Chinese system with what we have in India. Uh, we are a raccoon democracy. And even if the military functions, uh, you know, independently at times in its policies for recruitment, etc., uh, we cannot simply be sidestepping men from the Indian Army, Navy, and Air Force into the uh, police forces the way the Chinese have done. So we can't really take the example of the CCP. Uh, the PLA owes its allegiance not to China, it owes its allegiance to the CCP. So we've got to be very clear on that. And then there will be no dissent within the uh, entire chain uh, of hierarchy which is there in China. Uh, the consequences can be pretty grim. Uh, the other thing is that if you are right-sizing, uh, what are you right-sizing for? Have you got a national security strategy in place? I know Jan Shukla is going to turn around and say, yeah, those who need to know, they know. But at the same okay. time, do the armed forces actually have a national security strategy and the missions that they're working towards. Let, we let picked it, up, like I'm saying, that it is a reform in the right direction, provided the other steps are being taken. Okay, General Ashokla, please come so in. That's, that's exactly my point. Look at the change which has occurred. The creation of CDS DMA, defense coming out of the shadows of foreign policy, uh, the startup defense, uh, this whole Atmanir Bharta is just not an empty, empty slogan of self-reliance. It is unleashing the forces of civil military fusion. Now, when you say don't quote copy examples from abroad, I say fine. What are the Chinese? Or okay, let's not mention the Chinese since that annoys Dhanwa. The point is, uh, are we be smart enough to pick the best practices from the globe and tweak them to the Indian terrain, to the unique Indian genius? And if you don't want to copy anything, create a system of your own. Now, my argument is that if you do not want to follow the Chinese, we ourselves have been arguing for years about sidestepping to the police forces and all that. We've been arguing for years. I know I can show you documents, play commission uh, persuasions. Yeah. So my whole I, point I, 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 I just want to make I want to make this point about the sidestepping to other forces. The army is not a pipeline, and I don't agree with what Air Marshal Tiwari also said that we will be giving a lot of people training. Uh, uh, we we don't need to do that. Uh, the other CAPFs and others are very capable of training the people for their requirements. We have to first look at maximizing the effectiveness of those who come in for the Indian military. Right. Okay. Yeah. Secondly, uh, we cannot be at the same time uh, saying that we are taking the best practices from others and we are tweaking it to Indian conditions. Uh, the Indian conditions uh, are very, very unique. Uh, and therefore, you need to have people who are available for a longer period of time. That is the Indian condition that we need to look at. Can, can, can I just jump in here? Just just Shukla, one, uh, yeah. yeah. See, Sorry, uh, now let you... me just, just uh, okay. let me finish my set of arguments and yes. then we listen to one of them yeah. and there'll be a fine debate. So yes. what is the way that you right size? The way of right sizing, any the reality, Indian reality is anybody in service, he can't be thrown out. So you calibrate your future recruitments. So it's going to be a fine process. For example, when the army gets 40,000, it is going to get broken down. It will come to about 15, 20 people per battalion. And as you go along, you vary these numbers. Simultaneously, there are some, what shall I say, uh, 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 sunset professions and sunrise professions. So some of those have to be done away with, and those people have to be moved into these emerging domains of space, cyber, EW. I mean, much of this is happening. So there is a lot of thought behind all this. There is going to be calibrated downsizing. The third point I want to make, it is not about penny pinching. This is also a, a misnomer. It is an attempt to carry out these multiple transitions, which are which is difficult. And if you also save pensions in the process, where is the problem? The okay. point is that, you know, when you nitpick on all these, see, there has to be trust in this reform. There has to be trust in this reform or 
while we should be open to all kinds of questions, there has to be trust and belief or this will not go forward. The last point I would like to make is sometimes we underestimate our own capacity to change. I'll give you two, three examples. So I'm a very proud NDAite. NDA is a major contribution to the officer cadre. But over the years, it has got challenged, say, by the technical entry scheme. Now, what is the reform we need? The technical entry scheme is challenging the NDA entry in terms of deliverables. The point is that NDA, now I've seen this as GOC and CR track. When you ask NDA to reform, it says that we have no need to reform. Will this manifest in a problem in the future? It will. Look at the women entry. I've been arguing for long that let's look at the women as a talent pool. And what, but what look at how incrementally you did that, sir. Look at how incrementally women exactly. were actually brought so in. I'm against that. I'm saying look at them as a talent pool. And look okay. at, I'll give you the experience. So when they came to OTA Chennai, since that was under our track, we were told they will not meet this condition. I was amazed myself. They have exceeded every physical parameter. Today, apart from contact sports, which means boxing, they are doing everything with the males and perhaps doing matter in many domains. But I was privy to all the objections which happened. So I'm saying sometimes we underestimate our own ability to change. And we are surprised by the positive effects of the change. Similarly, okay. our Rashtri rifles. There are a whole lot of examples. Startup defense. Do you know who's the primary beneficiary of startup defense? Most of these startups, they are lieutenant colonels, wing commanders, squadron leaders, because they understand what the defense needs. Samir okay. Joshi has got a contract of 100 crores. Varka, just one minute. 100 crores. Has it turned around his life? I go to Turnbull Imaging. There is a Havaldar from the Armored Corps. There are two Havaldars from Infantry, one Havaldar from Artillery. So I'm making this plea, this persuasion for civil military fusion. When these animal spirits are unleashed, you will see what happens. So that is my whole plea about this. And at each stage, I am with great humility, I'm prepared to take every argument that Danua says. I don't matter any longer, but I will have it conveyed to various. Uh, no, of course uh, you. Of course you. Of course you, no, ma uh, of sir, course it's, you it's matter. It's not a question of what I am saying. I am only reflecting what I feel no, is the wisdom legitimate. Of yeah. Years of the, uh, having served. Uh, can, can I okay, please I, come I in? I just want to ask you one question. I mean, can, 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 okay. Can, can I, I just allow? Ask, I, no, I, I'll ask Lanu Chukka one direct I question. I compliment you on the quality of the debate. These are the debates which must happen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I will ask you a simple question. You come from a field regiment SP. Uh, they've got the latest K9, right? Yeah. Uh, would the commanding officer of that regiment be very happy if 50% of the turnover of the men on that system was to take place every year? And I'm being generous. Otherwise, it's going to be a much larger one. Uh, okay, you can counter that argument by saying, but it's going to be a graduated increase. And therefore, you know, by the time it actually comes to the larger 50%, uh, they would be quite adept at handling it. But the fact of the matter is, when you have gunners who are training for the K9, would you prefer to have somebody who's got 8, 9, 10 years of service on that system? Or would you prefer to have somebody who only knows how to pick up the round and then put it into the carousal? So, Ganwa, the transition is going to be so gradual that pehle it will be one gun detachment out of the 18. And you will never allow it to exceed 50-50. The CCS note says that this is a broad concept all changes, tweaking, modifications are left to the Raksha Mantri and the service chiefs. So this is all that and is I happening. Would strongly, I would strongly recommend, sir, that one of the issues is that instead of making Agnivir the only particular entry for all three services, we need to run both schemes side by side. That's a sincere plea. Okay. Uh, so you see the challenges that we have placed in front of a potential Agnivir. He has to go through a selection process which has been described by uh, Air Marshal. Uh, which is very tough, uh, all the free services, then he'll be on a probation period of four years, where he'll be, the day he steps into the scheme, he's under, under the scanner. He's, he's going to have, he's going to be competing every single day for those four years. Uh, then after that, then he has to get another selection process, which has to be fair and transparent, right? To get selected into the 25% who are retained. At the end of it, if he gets selected, good. If he doesn't get selected, he has to now go and apply to all the quotas that have been provided, and then he has to... And, undergo another selection process which involves what metrics we do not know. After that, when he joins there, he's again going to be joining at a lower rate. Now, when a person leaves after four years, does he want an upgrade or not? Is a simple question. Does he want or does everybody want to become an entrepreneur? When you leave after four years of uh, experience, uh, skill India and, you know, uh, make in India, all are fine. But do you expect all of them to go the entrepreneurship way? 
is it going to be an upgrade if it's going to be an upgrade i'm very happy with it if there's a healthy intersection of the individual's interests and the system's and services interest then we have a win win okay, situation I... for all it's great to see you here thank you for watching our work if you haven't subscribed yet don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to mojo story and support independent robust journalism